The Prince of Wales appeared in the English front line, his bright flag, the largest on the English side, behind and above him, and the French responded with a roar as they renewed their attack. But the English matched the war shout and surged forward themselves. Shield met shield with a crash, the weapons fell and thrust, and it was the English who forged ahead. The men trusted to guard the Prince of Wales were among the most experienced and savage in all the army. They had fought a score of battles, from Crecy to minor skirmishes, and they fought with cold-blooded ruthlessness. The two Frenchmen closest to the Prince were felled instantly. Neither was killed. One was stunned by a mace blow and he collapsed to his knees, and the other took an axe blow to his right elbow that shattered the bone and left him weaponless. He was dragged backwards by his companions, and that rearward movement spread to the neighbouring Frenchman. The half-stunned man tried to stand, but the prince kicked him backwards onto the ground and trod on his armoured wrist. Finish him, he said to the man behind him, who used a steel-shod foot to push up the fallen man's visor and rammed down with a sword point. Blood sprayed on the prince. Give me room, the prince bellowed. He stepped forward and swung the axe, feeling the impact jar up his arms as the blade chopped into a man's waist. He wrenched the axe free and thrust it forward. The haft was topped with a steel spike that dented the wounded man's breastplate but did not pierce it. The man staggered and the prince took another step forward and sliced the heavy weapon at the enemy's neck where the sharp blade went through the male avantail that he wore beneath his helmet to cover his neck and shoulders. The man staggered and the prince kicked him backwards and swung at another enemy. He was fighting without a visor and he could plainly see Charles, the Dauphin, not ten paces away. Come and fight me, he bellowed in French. You and me, Charles, come and fight. The Dauphin, so thin and awkward, did not bother to answer. He saw the Prince of Wales beat a man down with his axe and saw a Frenchman plunge a shortened lance that ripped open the Prince's Dupont. Beneath the Dupont, the Prince's cuirass was sculpted with his coat of arms. The lance thrust again and the prince slashed the axe down onto the assailant's shoulder. The Dauphin saw the big blade bite through the armour and saw the blood spray sudden and bright. Back, your highness, one of the Dauphin's guards said. That guardian could see that the enemy prince was determined to fight his way through to the heir to the French throne. That could not happen. And the English were fighting like demons, so it might happen if he did not act. Back, your highness, he said again, and this time pulled the Dauphin away. The Dauphin was speechless. He had surprised himself by how little fear he had felt once the battle began. True, he was well guarded, and the men charged with his safety were all brutally efficient fighters, but the Dauphin had tried to do his best. He had thrust a sword hard at an enemy knight and thought he had hurt the man. Most of all, he had been fascinated. He had observed the battle with an intelligent eye, and, though he was appalled at the butchery, he found it intriguing. It was a stupid way to decide great matters, he thought, for the decision was surely a lottery once the brawling began. There had to be a cleverer way to defeat the enemy. Back, sire! A man bellowed at him, and the Dauphin allowed himself to be drawn back through the gap in the hedge. How long had they been fighting, he wondered. It seemed like minutes, but now he saw that the sun was high above the trees, and so it must have been at least an hour. Time flies, he said. Did you speak, sir? A man shouted. I said time flies. Christ Jesus, the man said. He watched the Prince of Wales, who was standing cocksure above the men he had beaten down with his bloodied axe. The prince shook the axe at the retreating enemy. Come back, he bellowed. He's a fool, the Dauphin said in puzzlement. Sire? I said he's a fool. A fighting fool, the man said in grudging admiration.